9. So square root of 9 equals 3, and we know that that is true. So therefore, it is not an extraneous solution. It says x equals 4, and it is not extraneous. That is answer choice B. Hey, what's going on? Let's get into this. This is Integrated Math 2, Lesson 41, Solving Radical Equations. Radical. Wish I had a Ninja Turtle reference there, but this is 2020. Don't want to date the video too much, but Ninja Turtles, I mean, they're, they're still around, but they're, you know, they're not saying radical. Anyway, um, <clears throat> given the equation, square root of 2x plus 1 equals 3, solve for x and identify if it's an extraneous solution. Alright, so what we're going to do here is we're going to solve this equation for x, and then we're going to do some plugging in, okay? We're going to plug in and see if it gives us a true statement. So after we find the answer, the solution, we're going to, we're going to substitute it back into the equation and see if it gives us a, um, a solution that is um, correct or true. And if it's not going to be true, then we'll call it an extraneous solution. Alright, so let's get into this. Square root of 2x plus 1 equals 3. Now, in order to get rid of that square root sign, we're going to square both sides. So now these, the square root goes away, and the square goes away, and it leaves you with 2x plus 1 equals 3 squared, which is 9. Alright, next thing you can do is subtract 1 from both sides to get x by itself. So we get 2x <coughs> equals um, 9 minus 1, which is 8. Now we're going to, because the 2 is being multiplied to the x, we're going to divide 2 to both sides, and we get x equals 4. Now, as it says, it wants you to check to see if it's an extraneous solution, so you're going to take this 4, and you're going to substitute it back into your original problem, so 2 times 4 plus 1 equals 3. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 equals 3. 3, and then 8 plus 1 is 9, so square root of 9 equals 3, and we know that that is true, so therefore it is not an extraneous solution. It says x equals 4, and it is not extraneous. That is answer choice B. Alright, let's move on. I feel like every time I, I come up to it with the answer and stuff, I like pause for a minute, you know, just for you to let it sink in. But it's like I'm posing, you know, I'm not like I pose like, look what I just did. Uh, given, so number two says, given the equation, I'm assuming that this is supposed to say two to the square, you know, two times square root of x minus five. I don't think that's a power. Equals two, Okay. Solve for x and identify if it's, an, if it's an extraneous solution. So the first thing we're going to do is we got to get rid of the stuff that's on the outside of that square root to uh, do this properly, okay? So um, I just divided both sides by 2. So I get x minus 5 equals 1 because 2 divided by 2 is 1. Then we're going to square both sides to get rid of that square root sign, and that gives us x minus 5 equals 1 because 1 squared is 1. Then we're going to add both sides, uh, add 5 to both sides to get x by itself. That gives us x equals 6. Now we're going to take this 6 and we're going to put it back into our problem. So 2 um, and then times the square root of 6 minus 5 equals 2. And 2 times, and, and then on the inside of there it's going to be uh, 6 minus 5 is 1 equals 2. Now the square root of 1 is just 1, so 2 times 1 equals 2, and we could go a little bit further, but we do know that 2 to the, you know, 2 times 1 is actually 2, so that is a true answer, which means 6 is not extraneous. Alright, number 3. Solve x given the equation that, and they even though they don't say it, they still are looking for extraneous based off of your answer choices right there, okay? So let's solve for x and see what we get here. Uh, we have x plus 9 minus 4 on the outside, and minus 4 is on the outside, equals 1. So we're going to add 
four to both sides first because that's outside of the radical sign. We got to get that stuff on the other side first. So we get x plus 9 equals 5. Now, next we're going to do is going to square both sides to get rid of that square root sign. And we get x plus 9 equals 25. Alright, last thing we're going to do is subtract 9 from both sides because it's being added to the x. We're going x by itself, so we're going to get 25 um, minus 9, which equals, I believe, 16. Okay, <clears throat> so we can already eliminate c and d because x does not equal 34. And we're going to take the 16 and we're going to substitute it into our problem and see what we get. So we get 16 plus 9 minus 4 equals 1. Now 16 plus 9 is 25, so this is square root of 25, minus 4 equals 1. Um, square root of 25 is 5, minus 4 equals 1, and then 5 minus 4 is 1, which equals 1. And since 1 equals 1, then the solution is not extraneous. So all of them are given a solution that is not extraneous. Just pay attention to what you're doing. Your problems might be different where they are extraneous solutions. Um, so I just did three where they are not extraneous, but you could easily see that. All right, number four says, wow, whoa, woo. <laughs> all right, so Israel started to solve a radical equation this way. Okay, so let's skip that for right now. And he says his solutions are negative two and negative five. What error did he make? So the fact that he we you know, we didn't we don't know if he made an error, but the question asks if he made an error. Not if he made an error, but what error he made, so therefore we can assume that he made an error somewhere. So let's look at his steps. Alright, so he, he starts right here. Oh, come on, draw. Please. I think they're lagging a little bit on this end. Alright, so the first step is just the problem, okay? So that's the problem. It looks like he added four to both sides. That That is, that's good for him to do. Everything looks good so far. That's what he got when he added four to both sides. You know, he canceled out those four on that side. It makes sense. Next thing he did, he squared both sides. Looks great, looks great. Now, what's interesting here is, is this doesn't look like anything that we've dealt with so far. Because um, we have x plus 4, and you, have to, you, you do have to square the whole thing um, when, you, um, when, when you have more than one thing on uh, one side of the equal sign. You, have, you do have to square the whole thing. Okay? So then the next thing that he did was um, he had to... Well, yeah, the uh, square root sign went away on the left-hand side. You know, that's common sense. But on the right-hand side, he had to do some kind of method, like double distribution or something, to um, see what x plus 4 times x plus 4 is, or x plus 4 squared is. So this is x squared uh, plus 4x, and then 4x is going to be distributed there. So um, 4 times x is 4x, and then... 4 times 4 is 16, and then x squared plus 8x plus 16 should be that final answer. So this what this part is good too. Now the next thing he does is he subtracts um, the 6s from both sides to get x by itself, which makes sense, and it gets 10, so that's perfectly fine. And then the last step he does is he subtracts x from both sides. He gets a 7, so that's perfectly fine as well. So he, he got 0 um, on one side in order to um, do some factoring to solve by factoring because you have two different x's, right? So at this point, I'm going to use the AC method. I don't know what method he uses. It doesn't matter. A times C is 10. And two numbers that multiply together to give you 10 is 2 and 5. And they also add together to give you 7. So, you get the x plus 2 and the x plus 5. So, he did that part correct as well. So far, so good. Now, his final step is to solve 
by setting them both equal to zero. Remember the video talking about zero product property. So x plus 2 equals zero, and he has x plus 5 equals zero, which means x should be negative 5 and x should be negative 2. So he did everything right. But the one mistake that he did not do, and this is what you have to do every time. I feel like I made a video on this a long time back, but it could have been for a different class. It could have been Integrated Math 3 or something. I don't know. So, the, so he, he did everything right, but he did not put and substitute in um, his two solutions. He had to, You have to substitute back in negative 2 and a negative 5. You've got to substitute back in negative 2 first and see if that's going to be an erroneous solution or not. Then you got to substitute in negative 5 and see if that's going to be an erroneous solution or not. And then there are your true solutions are your true solutions, okay? Like, that's going to give you your answer. He you can't just say, yo, negative 2 and negative 5 are my answers and that's it. You know, you, know, you, you got to do a little bit more than that. So, he did everything correctly except he did not check for extraneous solutions. Bad boy. Alright, number 5 says violet was care okay I, yeah i got to i got to zoom out zoom out some more Z zoom in Z zoom out all right just just slide over all right go up a little bit all right violet was carrying around the steps to solve what what do you mean carrying around violet was carrying around the steps to solve square root of 3x plus 1 equals 4 on her way through the math factory, Violet dropped them and they mixed with other steps. Okay. Put the, so I guess other steps are already on the floor. Put the correct steps in order to solve square root of 3x plus 4. Alright, so the first thing that we do here, because there's no numbers with your, you know, on that side of the radical, you're going to square both sides first. So squaring both sides is the first thing you do. So D is the first step. So A will not be an answer choice because it says first A. And D will not be an answer choice because it says first C. So yeah, get those out the way. The next thing you're going to do, once you square both sides, you're going to have 3X plus 1 equals 4 squared, which is 16. So your next step is to subtract 1 from both sides. Okay? To get... Uh, the 3x by itself, you know, like to start getting x by itself. So you're going to subtract 1 from both sides. So that says A. A says subtract 1 from both sides. So therefore, C will be my correct answer because it follows that pattern properly. Okay, and then it says E, it says divide 3 from both sides, and there you go. So that's all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for your time. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. Subscribe for notifications of more videos and go to MathRive.com to request tutoring. I'll be more than happy to help you become successful in your mathematic prowess. My name is Oren, and I hope you all have a great rest of the day, guys.